No, no, let me mute. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to our uh, town hall today about um, auto insurance. Um, so my name is Vanessa Guerra. I serve as state representative for the 95th district, which includes part of Saginaw County. Um, if you're watching us live, thank you so much for joining us. I know we have a number of folks that have already put their questions in, so really appreciate that. Um, just going to quickly go over the agenda so you have an idea of what to expect on this call. Um, I'm going to say a few remarks and then I'm going to kick it off to Director Fox for some words from her. Then we'll get into the real meat of the presentation to talk about um, changes to auto no fault. Uh, and then we'll get into the question portion. Um, and so again, I just want to thank you all for being here. As you know, uh, last year we made significant changes to the no fault uh, auto insurance here in Michigan. Um, and, and it was really desperately needed um, because we pay some of the highest rates uh, throughout the country. And so the goal was always to uh, lower rates and to ensure that um, people actually can have access to uh, auto insurance um, while still having the option of maintaining the coverage that you did before. Um, and I think the, the third bit that's most important to me was also ensuring that um, we have greater consumer protection. So actually um, putting teeth into this legislation to give DIF the ability uh, to go after bad actors so that we can ensure that you are getting the savings that we promised you would get uh, while also getting the protections that all Michiganders deserve. Um, and with that, and so part of why we did this today is because those changes will take effect uh, July 1st, if you have a, a new policy that starts after that, um, or a policy that renews after July 1st. So um, with that, I'm gonna kick it off to Director Fox. Great, thank you so much, so much. Representative Guerra. Um, it's great to be here um, with you. I think somebody, you can unmute or it'll echo for your constituents, there we go. Um, Thank you so much for having me here today and for having my staff uh, here today uh, to talk about this important topic. Um, we I want to take a minute to, to tell everyone how much we appreciate um, the partnership on this and that you have worked um, to get this historic bipartisan legislation passed um, so that we can um, you know, provide some relief to Michigan drivers. I know um, you know some of the folks in your district have been hard hit uh, in a couple ways on COVID and with flooding. Um, 
And so some people have asked me why we didn't just put this off with so much going on and we've got, you know, um, significant civil rights issues going on. And the, and the reason is because it's right now that, that Michigan drivers more than ever need this kind of relief. Um, and so we really appreciate that. We know that you work um, on this select committee on COVID-19 and you're working to both to make sure people are safe now and to reopen the economy in a way that gets people, you know, back back on their feet. Um, so we really appreciate all the efforts that you do for your constituents that really benefit the whole state of Michigan and, and for your help on, on uh, educating drivers about these changes. And so I just like to talk a little bit. I'll introduce myself of where I came from and then um, I'm going to give kind of an overview, just a broad overview of the law and why we why the changes kind of were made. And then I'm going to turn it over to Zach Dillinger from my office, who's going to go through actual slide presentations, um, which kind of go through a lot of material about the kind of the nitty gritty of the law. Um, if you don't get every word down, don't worry. You can um, you'll, he'll give you resources to look up this information and even replay the tape if you want to or look at some videos on how to fill out the forms and some other things because um, we know that at least the first time you hear it it seems like a lot of information um, but we're going to try and distill it down and then um, Zach will also tell you how to get in touch with us if we can be more helpful in the in the future as well. So with that um, my name is Anita Fox. I'm the director of the Department of Insurance and Financial Services for the state of Michigan. I was appointed to this position by Governor Whitmer when she took office in January of 2019. Before that, I had practiced law in Washington, D.C. and then in Michigan. I had done a lot of insurance coverage, so this was really a great opportunity to take what I'd learned over years of practicing law and apply it um, to this different context and, and um, use it to uh, work on things like this uh, for, for the for this state. So um, I'm happy to be here to do this. So. Generally, um, I want to talk about no fault and what it is and what what the main things so are. You're going to hear a lot about, um, you know, no fault law and, and what no fault means is that it's a system where you uh, your own insurance company will pay for your your injuries. If you are in an accident, your medical costs and the related things. And I know I had an accident a few years ago where I was just driving down the road and somebody broadsided me, ran a red light, had no insurance, had no license. And as I was doing with my insurance company, I thought, why is my insurance company paying when someone ran into me? But I realized that the alternative was that that person, uh, first I'd have to kind of chase them to, to establish liability and, and that, but also my recourse would be after their insurance policy. Well, they didn't have one. And they made a choice that I would never have made for my family. Um, so in that context, even though I thought it was sort of unfair that my insurance company was paying, I realized for me that seemed like a better system. And, and the legislature considered both alternatives of going to kind of a pure tort system, as they call it, where you have to sue the at fault driver and figure out whose thing it is or staying with this system, but improving it by giving people more choices. We had the highest benefits in the in the land, which is great coverage. People say, why do you mess with a system that had best kind of the best benefits? And the truth is because they're only great benefits if you can afford them. And if you can't and don't have insurance, they're not so great. And we found that many Michigan drivers, a disproportionate number to certain other places, were driving without insurance because they couldn't afford the high premiums. And then on top of that, even people who could afford them were affording them by by having to make some really tough economic decisions for their families. Food, tuition, prescriptions. We know how how expensive everything is. And if you want to drive on the roads in Michigan, the law says you have to have certain coverages on your car and to get plates. And so people were having to make the choice of complying with the law and being able to drive to get to their job, get their kids to school or food or other things that that really tough choices obviously so keeping the highest benefits in the country while lowering costs was not an easy task and it took the legislature many sessions and a couple of administrations and ideas came and this was the first time that a compromise legislation was able to be passed and and so at, like any compromise it's probably not perfect from anyone's uh, point of view but it was, certainly was a historic first step and a large step and what the biggest difference for you is you now have some choices and since Michigan's never had a choice, we've never had to think about what is what what are the coverages under the policy and how much they provide 
because everyone provided the same amount of medical coverage and now you're going to have a choice. I'm just going to take two seconds to tell you a little bit about that choice. I'm not going to get in any detail because Zach will give you so much information <laughs> that you'll have plenty, but there are basically two parts of the policy, the parts that you have to buy. There are some kinds you can buy if you choose or not, and you probably heard about these like collision. If you get in an accident, do you want to have to pay premiums to get your car fixed or would you rather fix it yourself, go without it, fix and save money on your policy? Those things you can choose. Some coverages you have to buy to drive on the road. One of those is called personal injury protection. That's the one I talked about that pays your medical expenses in your families if you're in an accident. And that coverage um, used to be for everybody lifetime unlimited benefits. So anything related to your accident for as long as you needed it. That's the PIP portion. And now you're going to have some choices about whether you want to keep unlimited or have other ones depending on your family's needs and budget. The other part that you have to buy that's that there's one other little part, but the other important part that had changes is called bodily injury protection. And that's the part since the PIP covers you for your own injuries, the PIP, the, sorry, the bodily injury is in case you injure someone. If you're alleged to be at fault in an accident and someone sues you and says, I've, you know, I can't, um, you know, use my leg and, and I had a lot of pain and suffering or whatever, you always could be sued for that. You could always be sued for those kind of severe injuries. But now, because everyone doesn't have full, lifetime medical benefits, there's also some risk that they could sue you for their excess um, medical costs if they didn't have health insurance or something else to cover it. So so that's why the bodily injury part has changed a bit because it's the parts that protects you. you so your insurance company will pay if you get a claim against you. So that's kind of the big picture of the two major kinds of coverage that were changed here. Um, and then uh, Zach will kind of go into the details talk about the forms you're going to fill out and that kind of thing. Then I'll answer some questions, um, you know, that you may have. And then uh, we'll wrap up with some some words um, and and Zach telling you kind of where you can get information. If we don't get to everything or where if you want to go back and fill in fill in some more. So with that, again, thank you so much, Representative Guerra, for having us uh, for this great conversation. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Zach. Thank you. Hello, uh, thank you, Director Fox. Uh, as the director said, my name is Zach Dillinger. I work in the communications area at the Department of Insurance and Financial Services. And I'm here to dive a little deeper into the changes to auto insurance and help you understand what's happening and how to move forward. So we know the changes can seem big, but we are here to help and make sure that you understand the changes that are coming this summer. And we will provide you with resources, including our website, videos, and some publications. You'll also be able to watch the presentation again later on our website as we have previously recorded this presentation. So let's get started. All right, so first some background about DIFFs. We are fee funded and we don't require your tax dollars to operate. We regulate Michigan's insurance and financial industries, which includes insurance agents, companies, mortgage companies, deferred presentment companies, sometimes called payday lenders, state chartered banks, and credit unions. In all that work, our guiding principle is that we are regulators, and that means we work for you as a consumer protection agency. In our day-to-day -day work, we work to foster economic opportunity for Michigan consumers, seek to provide fair access to institutions that are safe, sound, and entitled to public confidence, and also, as we are here doing today, provide financial and insurance education to help people understand their options. So now that you know a little more about who we are, let's get on to the changes with auto insurance. To understand the changes to the law, you need to understand that there are three basic parts, three mandatory parts to a Michigan auto insurance policy. In order to drive legally in Michigan, you must buy these three coverages. They are property protection insurance or PPI personal injury protection medical coverage, we call that PIP, and residual liability bodily injury and property damage. Now that's quite a mouthful, so we do shorten that to BIPD. I'll only be speaking about how the new law affects the last two, as director said, and uh, so that's the order of attack for the day. It's PIP and BIPD. 
On the screen now, you should see the big picture changes that the new no-fault law makes to the way auto insurance works in Michigan. The new law provides drivers for the first time with a choice on the level of medical coverage they want to buy. It lowers costs while maintaining the highest benefits available in the nation. And it increases consumer protections. Now we're going to touch a little more on each of these three points as we move forward. So let's talk PIP. Remember that PIP medical coverage is one of those three mandatory coverages and it pays for your medical care if policyholders are hurt in an auto accident. Now, as director said, under the old law, everyone had to have unlimited PIP medical coverage. You didn't have a choice to drive legally in Michigan. Now you'll get to choose a level of PIP, which is right for you, your family, and your budget. The new available limits equal or exceed the highest benefits in the country, and Michigan is the only state where unlimited PIP medical continues to be an option. The new, excuse me, the PIP coverage levels available to you as Michigan drivers are unlimited coverage per person per accident. Now that's what we have now. Up to 200, excuse me, up to $500,000 in coverage per person per accident. Up to 250,000 in coverage per person per accident. Now you see there's a second $250,000 level. This one allows you to exclude people from your coverage, members of your household that have other forms of health insurance that will cover those auto accidents. Allows you to exclude them from PIP and save a little money on the premium. Now there's a $50,000 coverage option that's per person per accident. If the named insured is enrolled in Medicaid and all the other household members have either qualifying health insurance or another Michigan auto policy. Now finally, there is a medical PIP opt out which is available if you have Medicare parts A and B and all other members of your household again have either qualifying health insurance or another Michigan auto policy. Now it's important to know that if you don't make a choice, a specific choice with your auto insurance agent or company, you will default to receiving unlimited, uh, unlimited PIP coverage and you will pay the premium associated with that coverage. Now earlier I said that the new law would lower costs while maintaining benefits and what you see on the screen here is one of the most important ways of doing just that. Each insurance company will be required for the next eight years to reduce statewide average PIP medical premiums. The amount of the reduction depends on the level chosen. So for the unlimited option, it's an average 10% required reduction. For the $500,000 option, it's a 20% reduction. The $250,000 limits, it's a 35% reduction. And for the $50,000 option, it's a 45% average reduction. Now here are some additional ways that the new law reduces costs. So we will have a fee schedule. Unlike health insurance or Medicare, auto insurance previously did not have limitations on what a healthcare provider, so a doctor, a nurse, uh, ambulance service, whatever, could charge for those services. Now a fee schedule is a required cost control measure between the auto insurance companies and those healthcare providers to make that PIP medical care more affordable for you. The law sets a schedule of fees that can be charged by those providers for those services. And this provision takes effect after July 1st of 2021, so that's next year. And you're not gonna lose care, it just means that healthcare costs will be better controlled. Also on the screen, you see the Michigan Catastrophic Claims Association, or MCCA, and their assessment. Now the MCCA is an association of auto insurers. It's required by statute and that group reimburses member companies for PIP medical costs which exceed an identified amount in the event of a catastrophic injury. Now the MCCA has already announced that as a direct result of this new law, it's able to lower its per vehicle assessment starting July 2nd, 2020. So I'm just actually under a month now. And this will save Michigan drivers at least $120 per car. The old fee today as it stands is 220. Going forward after July 2nd, it'll be 100. And drivers choosing less than that unlimited PIP medical option will not pay the assessment to the MCCA going forward. Now, one of the most important parts of this new law is it increases consumer protections in the insurance market and helps us make sure the market is fair. 
Now, this new law eliminates certain non-driving factors from rating. So the rating process is where the insurance company determines how much your coverage should cost. And this new law prohibits those companies from using your sex, your marital status, your home ownership status, your credit score, your educational level, your occupation, and your zip code in setting your auto insurance rate. The new law also created the Fraud Investigation Unit, which is a new unit within DIFS, which investigates criminal and fraudulent activity related to insurance and financial markets. Those folks work with the Attorney General and law enforcement to prosecute those crimes. Now, this is a double benefit for us because auto insurance fraud drives up premiums for everybody. So it's a cost savings method as well as a consumer protection. The new law requires prior approval. Auto insurance rates, policies, manuals, forms, those all must now be filed with and approved by DIFFs prior to being offered to consumers. Now, finally, the new law increases fines and penalties. So it allows for increased fines on insurance companies, agents, and agencies for certain violations of the law. So, as I said before, you will need to choose a coverage level that's appropriate based on your needs and your budget. Your auto insurance company or agent will give you a form, and that's actually how you will make your choice. You'll fill out this form, and which will describe the benefits and risks of the coverage options that you have. Now, you may also wanna talk with your auto insurance agent or company to discuss those personal auto insurance needs before you do make your choice. When you do go to make that choice, fill out that form, you might need to bring some things with you depending on which level of coverage you're going to choose. So you might need information from your health insurer or your employer, which identifies people covered under your health insurance. You might need a statement as to whether your health policy complies with the law, which means it does not exclude or limit auto accident injuries and has a deductible of less than 6,000. Now that's, that's the qualifying health coverage part that we spoke of earlier. That is one part of it. So. Uh, does not limit or exclude auto accident injuries and deductible of less than 6,000. Now, finally, if you're gonna choose one of the Medicare or Medicaid levels, uh, you may also need to bring proof of enrollment. So making your choice, you're gonna fill out a form. That's the PIP form, and you see a sample of it here on your screen right now. Um, your company or your agent will give you a form, and it might look like this. It might look a little different than what you see here on the screen, but it will still contain all the terms and information you need to make your choice. Now, it's a four-page form, but you do only have to fill out a small part, and the information you need is included on the form. You see now in front of you the first page of the form, which has some definitions of some words that will be used and other important information that you should read. Now these sample forms are also posted on our website, which is michigan.gov forward slash auto insurance. So let's take a closer look at this form and what you'll need to do to make your new PIP selection. So that was page one of the form. Now on pages two and three has section A of the form. Now section A explains the risks and benefits of those coverage options that we just talked about. And it also explains in plain language what each choice would mean for you and the potential trade-offs you make when you choose that option. Page four, the last page of the form, is section B. Now this is where you'll actually make your choice by initialing the form next to one, and please only one, of the options which are available to you. Also, if you choose the 250,000 with exclusions option, this is where you would list the names and birth dates of the people you're excluding from your PIP coverage. Please know you only need to list the names and birth dates of household members you intend to exclude from PIP Medical. Not everybody in the household, just those that you're excluding. Also on page four of the form, you'll find section C. Now here you'll need to initial the form next to four statements, which confirm that you understand what you're choosing and how it applies to you. And finally, you'll sign and date the form. And once you've given the signed and dated form back to your agent or company, you will have finished making your PIP choice. So as you can see, it's a fairly simple process, but it is a very important one. And you really need to understand before you make your choice. So be sure you've carefully considered all of your options before you make your selection. 
Now with that, we have finished with what we need to talk about with PIP. So let's talk about BIPD. Now earlier we talked about that there are three mandatory coverages to a Michigan auto insurance policy. And this is the second and final one we're gonna talk about today. Going forward, another choice you'll get to make is on your level of BI coverage. So the BI is the portion of your no-fault policy, this is what Director Fox already said, that it will pay up to certain amounts if the policyholder is found legally responsible for certain damages. It pays for those claims which are made against you. Now, currently, the minimum BI coverage level is $20,000 for a person who is hurt or killed in an accident, $40,000 for two or more persons in any one accident, and $10,000 for property damage in another state. So that's if you sideswipe a fence in Ohio or hit a mailbox in Indiana or something like that. That's where that coverage comes from. Now, the new law will allow drivers the ability to choose bodily injury limits that best suit their family needs. The old $20,000 per person and $40,000 per accident limits hadn't been adjusted for inflation in over 30 years. And as we all know, things have gotten more expensive over those 30 years. So drivers will now have the choice of purchasing coverage of $50,000 per person and $100,000 per accident or even higher to protect themselves against that increased potential for lawsuits. If you don't make a choice, there is a default minimum, and that new default minimum is $250,000 per person per accident and $500,000 for two or more persons in any one accident. Now, you may want to consider consulting with legal and financial advisors to determine your level of assets and income and how best to protect that before working with your licensed agent to make your new selection. Now, like with your PIP choice, your company or your agent will give you a form to fill out to make your new BIPD choice. The form you see on the screen is the approved form, and your company should use a form which is identical. It probably won't say sample on it, but other than that, it should be identical. We also have posted this to our website so you can zoom in on it and read it at your leisure. Now, as with the PIP form, you really need to understand and read this form before you fill out a couple of small areas and then sign the form to make that new BIPD selection. Now, I also wanna point your attention to the fact that we've produced videos on how to fill out both the BI and the PIP forms, and you can find those on that website as well, michigan.gov forward slash auto insurance. So page one of the BIPD form, part A, and that explains the BI coverage in detail and tells you what the coverage is about. Part B explains the potential risks you face as a Michigan driver and explains how BI coverage protects you. Part C, you'll initial the form in three places, next to three statements that confirm that you understand the risks and benefits of the coverage that you are choosing. And finally, in Part C also, you'll sign and date the form. Once you've done that and given the form back to your agent or your company, you will have completed your BIPD selection process. So, like with PIP, it's fairly simple, but very important. To quickly recap what we have just seen, you've seen those two forms that you'll have to complete. The PIP form is where you'll pick the amount of medical coverage you have for your family. The BI form is where you'll pick how much your insurance company will pay on your behalf if you're at fault in an accident. Both forms contain all the information you'll need to make that selection. So with that, we have talked about the big changes from the law that we need to cover right now. But before we get to your questions, I do wanna take a little time to tell you more about how DIFFs can help you. Perhaps the most important thing that we can tell you today is that we wanna hear from you. Now, we're not gonna be able to answer your individual questions about your specific auto insurance policy. However, we do have people, uh, not a computer asking you to press one or anything like that, in the office, normally in the office, working remotely now, uh, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 until p.m. to help answer those questions, whether they're auto insurance related or if you just have general insurance questions or even financial questions, same, same call center. That call center is housed within our Office of Consumer Services, which also handles all complaints that come into our office. So if you're concerned that your auto insurance company is unfairly delaying or denying your claim, uh, maybe charging you the wrong premium, 
Uh, otherwise, just they're not performing as required under the law. We are here to help. We do first encourage you to attempt to resolve that complaint directly with the agent or auto insurance company. But if you can't reach a resolution, you can file a complaint in writing with our office via email or through our website. And speaking of websites, we have created a new one. And this new website exists to help educate consumers about this new law. The new website, as I've said before, is michigan.gov forward slash auto insurance. Now that site includes a way to inform consumers on the auto insurance changes, tips for shopping for insurance, how to file a complaint and what that complaint process looks like, what to do if you're having issues with your insurance company, agency, or agent, and a place to report insurance fraud. Now this website will be updated on an ongoing basis to provide the latest information to you as we do get closer to July 1st. So to reiterate, we want to hear from you. We all work for you and we are here to help you with these new changes. So it is important to note and remember that in advance of your auto insurance renewal after July 1st, 2020, your agents and insurance companies will supply forms that describe the benefits and risks of the coverage options you have for PIP and BIPD. You may also want to consult with your agent to discuss your personal auto insurance needs. Please call or email our office if you have any questions about the forms or anything else related to the new auto insurance law. Our phone number on the screen there is 833-ASK-DIFFS. We also have an auto insurance specific email box, which is autoinsurance at michigan.gov. Again, on our website, we have numerous forms, uh, handouts, and some great videos that are posted there. So you can download those and catch up with everything you need to know. Now with that, I think we have hit the highlights and we can now take the questions that you've typed into the chat system. Please feel free as we answer questions to ask more as they do come up. And please remember that your questions about your specific policy should be saved for our office analysts. Now with that, I'd like to introduce our question moderator, Andrea Miller, who will read your questions as they come in. Andrea? Thank you, Thank Zach. You, Zach. Um, it looks like most of these questions will be for Director Fox so far. Um, the first one is, comes from Randy. How will the changes in the healthcare portion of the auto insurance work with Medicare? I'll make sure I'm on, not on mute. Great. Oh, uh, thanks for that question, Randy. So in the past, you probably heard that Medicare was not paying for Michigan auto accidents, and that's because everyone had lifetime health care under their um, auto policy uh, for auto related injuries and Medicare only pays where there's no, no other insurance. We have confirmed with Medicare that where, where a senior opts out and has Medicare, that um, that Medicare will pay those auto related um, injury costs. A um, couple of things to note: um, if if someone lives in a household with other people and they're on Met and the person is on Medicare, everyone else in the household must also have qualified health coverage of some sort, meaning that they have to be covered under a policy that doesn't exclude accidents and has a deductible less than six thousand. Are covered under Medicare Parts A and B also or um, they're covered under another Michigan auto policy that will provide that. The idea is to make sure that one way or another, every person in your family that's injured in an auto accident um, is covered um, for those accident related injuries. Thank you. Um, JC asks, um, I just want to confirm that if I live alone and have Medicare Advantage plan, which cover all services under Medicare Part A and Part B, that I have the option of opting out of PIP. That is correct. Um, and when you have Medicare Parts A and B both, um, including you know, a service and an additional supplemental Medicare Advantage plan, you um, would be able to opt out of PIP. I should note that PIP and medical coverage are not exactly identical. In other words, both of them, uh, both PIP and, and your Medicare will cover um, certain costs for you um, it, related to your injury, your medical bills, um, some other types of um, replacement services and the like. But PIP also covers other things like if you needed a ramp built on your house or um, attendant care, you know, other kinds of things that may be more limited under Medicare. But yes, you will have that option. 
Thank you. Um, the next question, I have not left my house since mid-March. Will I get credit for that? That's not something because of the new law, but that is something I can tell you about. So um, one of the things, as we all know, that um, insurance companies rate on is is kind of the risk. And, and so you get a different rate if you drive your car to work every day and, and the like. So you probably have seen in the news that some auto insurance companies voluntarily said that they were going to um, get back some premium for March and April or April and May, depending on the carrier. Um, and, and you should, if your insurance company is one of those, um, they would have, they will be contacting you. In addition, I issued an order saying that all insurance companies have to now do that. Report to me how they're going to do it or, or if there's some reason they can't and, and let us know how they're going to let their consumers know. Um, so, so many and it'll, it probably will be most um, Michigan drivers will get some kind of uh, relief in that form of, of across the board um, percentage of their policy for a couple of months. In addition, every driver has a right all the time to contact their insurance company and say, my driving habits have changed and I'd like to know how that affects me. Even if you get one of those across the board reductions, you may be entitled to more sustained or longer uh, reductions or greater reductions. So there is, a, it depends on, on your company and um, you should contact them uh, and see if there's an additional discount. And if you have questions or run into a roadblock or feel you're not getting what you deserve, you can always contact our office. Thank you for that. Um, Susan asked, asked um, my insurance went up 20% since the new law passed. So I am not realizing any savings with these. So I'm not, must be, I'm not seeing any savings with these new changes. Um, well, first of all, the new changes don't take effect until you have a policy that was issued or renewed after July 2nd. So um, that is the first reason that for sure you're not seeing anything about the new law. Now, everybody's um, insurance premiums under auto no fault are very individualized. There's so many factors that go into it, whether you've had tickets, added people to your policy, changed your driving habits, um, added coverages. So there, there could be a lot of reasons why it's go gone up, but it's not because of the law or the failure to get the savings because that hasn't gone into effect yet. It's also important to note that when those changes go into effect, those are statewide averages. So an individual's drivers may be more or less than the published kind of average. But for your particular question, um, that's not because of the law. You should contact your agent if you don't understand why your premium went up uh, or your insurance company. If you feel you don't get, you know, the right uh, response or you don't, you're not satisfied or you think you're not being treated fairly, you can always contact our office. Thank you. Um, next question. Can you get sued if your insurance coverage has been exhausted in an accident? That's always been the case. So even when we had um, the old law where, as Zach told you, had 20,000 um, per person and 40,000 per accident in how much your insurance company had to pay if you um, if you were at fault in an accident and someone made a claim against you, you could always be um, claimed against for their pain and suffering and other severe injury, which could exceed that 2040 or what other limit that you chose. Um, now, because people can choose less than unlimited health benefits, they might also come against you and say, I bought a $250,000 policy to cover myself, um, but my um, injuries cost, my, my medical bills were 300000 and so they could try and claim that extra fifty dollars against you. Now, we know statistically that most accidents um, have medical costs of less than 250, but there are some that have much higher. Um, what kind of assets um, a plaintiff's attorney decides to go after is anybody's guess, but that's always been one of those things that you could decide your insurance limit on. Um, so the short answer to that is yes, you can be sued if you are at fault in an accident or alleged to be at fault. And if you're found to be at fault, you can be responsible for certain costs that the um, injured party incurred. And your policy will pay up to your BIPD limits and then the rest could be on you. 
Um, next question. Does my work health insurance count as qualified health coverage? And will they tell me if, if I'm covered? So employer sponsored health coverage, whether it's through a, a company or whether your employer covers those costs themselves, may count as um, qualified health health coverage, but it's not a certainty because two things have to be true for it to be qualified health coverage. One, it has to not exclude or um, limit coverage for auto accidents. And two, it has to have a deductible of less than $6,000. Now, any Michigan health policy, uh, sorry, auto policy cannot, no, let me go backwards. Any Michigan health policy, I was right at first, uh, is not allowed to uh, exclude coverage for auto accidents. So if you have a Michigan regulated policy, and you may not know this, but some of the, like for example, big auto companies, they're self-insured, so they are regulated by the federal government and not by the state. So there are instances in which a health policy issued to a company and then providing coverage for its employees may not cover auto accidents, so you'd have to check. Second, you may have a deductible of more than $6,000. Under the law, you're in the person who provides your health uh, insurance is supposed to provide you with that information. And that information will also include who is um, who's covered under your policy as well under your health policy, because if, if you decide to exclude them, you need to know that they have health coverage and their birthday. Um, if you do not receive that letter, it might be from your employer as well, because they may coordinate um, if it's employer sponsored coverage with the insurer to get that information out to you, but one way or other, you'll want to have that information because it is you making the representation to your auto insurance um, about whether you have that coverage or not, if you choose to exclude people or opt out, and you'll be responsible for the information. So you want to make sure that your, your health insurer has verified it. If you don't get that information in a timely manner, call your um, health insurer or call your um, employer uh, like the benefits office and ask why you don't have that, have them contact the company for you or get you a copy um, so that you can make those choices. If you still have a trouble, you can call DIFFS and we'll try and help you get it. Thank you. Um, it looks like this next question is for the representative. Um, can you tell us why you supported this le legislation? Could we lose her? Okay, I think we're good to go now. Oh, there um, you are. Yeah, so hi. Uh, I've always been very honest with people that this, um, with the six years that I've been in office, this uh, is without a doubt the most difficult vote that I had. Um, you know, I've been in office since 2015, and I don't think that a week uh, has gone by that I have not been asked about our incredibly high cost of car insurance here in Michigan. Um, whether it was people who stopped me at the grocery store or at church or members of my own family who asked me about it repeatedly, um, so it's a topic that has been on my mind since I've been in office, and there are different versions that have been introduced over the last six years, um, and none of them have passed prior to this. And so last year when this came up, um, you know, I struggled with it because it's, it's not perfect. Um, and But I also know that the alternative to not supporting this and that to not doing something was that nothing would change and that people would continue to drive without car insurance, would continue to get ticketed for driving without car insurance, um, and then when they don't have it, it also uh, increased costs for those of us who do have car insurance. Um, and so some of the things that um, brought me to a point where I was comfortable enough voting on this while still committed to making changes to it uh, was getting, you know, eliminating the non-driving factors. So the fact that I'm married now or that I'm a woman should not uh, uh, play a role in what I am charged for car insurance. Um, another one was the fraud unit that was mentioned already. Um, that's a new piece that wasn't there before. And again, gives teeth to dips to really go after those individuals that are not um, charging the correct rates. Um, and then the changes to the rating process itself. So previously, and if I get any of the terminology, dips as the experts, please correct me, um, but they could um, set the rate and it would just be the rate until someone essentially um, successfully challenged it. Whereas now they file a rate, it has to get approved first before then um, being in place and, and people paying that rate. And so that alone is, is a big piece that I don't think people pay enough attention to because that gave insurance companies all of the power. Um, and so now we have this uh, consumer agency that can actually look at those rates and say, no, that's that's not a fair rate to, tra uh, to, to charge individuals. Um, and then, you know, I guess finally, um, um, or the non-driving factors, the other thing that I mentioned, 
But those sort of pieces got me to a point where I was comfortable and not voting for it because I knew that there would be reductions for constituents. Um, but I'm also committed to to making changes. So as um, this finally goes into place, you know, if there are things that come up, um, contact it's your legislator that you want to contact to um, advocate for changes to it, not diffs. You know, they're there to help you through what the law is. Um, but as a lawmaker, um, it's my job to make sure that this is as good of a policy um, that we can have in place here in Michigan. Thank you, Representative. Um, Next question for Director Fox. Um, it looks like we've had time for about two more questions. So um, Director Fox, is there still a fee for those who didn't have auto insurance? I tried to buy a policy last year but couldn't afford the penalty. Well, that's a great question because that's another consumer protection under this law. Um, that's a change from the old law. So as, as mentioned in this question, in the past, if you um, went without auto insurance for a period of time, even if it was because you couldn't afford it, when you finally tried to buy it again, there was a penalty, extra money you had to pay as a penalty for going uninsured. Pe they didn't want people kind of coming and going in the insurance system. Um, recognizing that a lot of people were out of the system because they couldn't afford it, the new law gives kind of an amnesty period for 18 months starting on July 2nd. For 18 months after July 2nd, if you get uh, auto insurance, you cannot be charged a penalty for having been uninsured. So this is a great time for two reasons for people to get insured who are driving uninsured. First is um, there's some choice now that maybe you'll be more affordable for you. And the second is the penalty has been removed. So thank you for that question. All right, thank you. Um, last question before you can turn it over to Zach to close us out. Um, I have ongoing health issues from a crash I had in 1997. Will I still get my treatment under the new law? Uh, that's a great question too because this is one of the ways that auto insurance and um, health insurance are different. Health insurance stops the day you don't have health insurance anymore, meaning today I go to the doctor, I have health insurance, it'll be covered. If I lose my job or lose my health in, and lose my health insurance and then tomorrow go to the doctor, I don't have coverage. Auto insurance covers you, you're covered if on the day of the accident the policy is in effect even if you never pay another dollar of premium. Um, so for whatever accident you've already had, uh, whatever benefits you're receiving will be under that policy as it existed. So meaning unlimited lifetime benefits for anybody who has an accident in 1997. Um, and I'm sorry to hear you're still having issues uh, since 1997, but you don't have to worry that your benefits will change. I think Andrew, we can, I think I only see one more on here. Why don't we just take that last question too? Okay, from Susan. Um, if I'm on Medicaid, do I have to go with the $50,000 option? Um, no, that's just a choice to give you one additional option. If you're on Medicaid and everyone in your household has some kind of qualifying health coverage, you can choose that, but you are um, able to make a different decision for your family based on your needs and budget. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, Director. Um, I think now I'll turn it over to Zach and I think he can go through some resources that um, we have available on our website. Zach. Cool. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Andrea. Thank you, Director, and thank you, Representative Guerra. Uh, and thank all of you for attending today. Now, we, we did receive a significant number of questions for today's live broadcast and we have run out of time. Uh, if we didn't answer your question directly, we do apologize, but we want to highlight that you can email your written question to the address on the screen, which is autoinsurance at michigan.gov, uh, or give us a call at 833-ASK-DIFFS. And please do check back to the FAQs, which are on our website one last time, michigan.gov forward slash autoinsurance. Uh, those FAQs are updated frequently and you can get some really great information there. Uh, finally, you can also connect with us on social media, including LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Some great content on all of those things on auto insurance, as well as just other insurance and financial matters. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Representative Guerra for today's closing. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you again to everyone who uh, joined this live. Um, I will be sharing this um, on my social media networks and through the e-news that we send out. And it will be available, it sounds like, on DIFF's website as well. So if you missed it um, or if there's something you wanted to go back to, that'll be available to you. 
I'm very grateful the DIPS was here. Um, they're the experts in the implementation of this law. And again, as I mentioned, um, once this new law goes into effect, if you see things down the road that need change, as your legislator, please reach out and share that information with me so that we could do um, all that we can to make sure that this is as close to perfect as we can get it, uh, because Michiganders need relief and we need to ensure that there are people that are insured while they're uh, driving on our roads and that's the goal with this. And so thank you all so much for joining um, and I hope you learned something. Thank you. And thank you, Representative, for having us. We so appreciate it. Um, I do see that a number of questions have just come in in the last few minutes, so feel free to um, email this to us or look for them on our webs. Uh, you know, uh, look for frequently asked questions on our website. Um, if you if you don't uh, if you didn't get your question answered, I, I love to stay all day, but I, I recognize people have other things to do, and the representative and the staff needs to get back to work. So. Um, I just want to be respectful of everyone's time, but I, I really appreciate these were great questions and, and I see a lot more that I wish we had time to talk about. So please make sure you get your questions answered. But thank you again and thanks for having us.